Hey, this is Lynn coming at you on this Monday morning. It is weigh-in Monday. I have completed my 17th week on the carnivore diet, and I'm here to go over my weigh-in results. Wet hair today. Took my shower a little late. It's been an interesting week. I kind of caught a little something that my daughter had. It was this thing in the throat, and um, I was not too bad to be honest I usually don't catch anything that she has but you know she caught it from a co-worker and then she ended up with post nasal drip and was having trouble sleeping and I thought oh great this is not going to be good but so far I had one day with a scratchy itchy throat took some stuff doing really well so I'm just kind of getting I think it drained my energy a little bit also had a kind of a simultaneous increase in inflammation in my hips and I, I, ha I don't know if it's because I was dealing with an infection or not, but it could be pork rinds. I'm not 100% sure. I'm just trying to theorize here because they kind of, so basically Thursday I went and to this grocery store and I picked up, I got uh, beef fat trimmings because I wanted to do uh, beef fat in my air fryer, which I did and it was really delicious. But I also picked up these like barbecue flavored pork rinds, two bags of them, and I've been feeling so good. And I get this thing where if I feel good, it's like sometimes I go into this state of denial that maybe I can eat stuff that I wasn't able to eat before. And that happened to me Thursday night. And I kind of went hog on the pork rinds. And... Then I started, then I ended up, up with this inflammation and the inf my inflammation, lots of times for me will settle in my hips. My hips are kind of a weak area for me. And so I've been dealing with this hip pain ever since then. Now it's getting better and I'm doing some stretching exercises and trying to drink water and hopefully get, it's starting to go away. But then, so Friday is when I woke up with the hip pain, and then uh, Saturday, or well, Friday night is when I got the, started get, to get the scratchy, itchy throat. So I don't know. I don't know what the culprit is, but I think I need to stay away from pork rinds. I had been avoiding all the pork because they're higher in histamine, and this also had some flavors like paprika and some other stuff, so I was just, shouldn't have done it. But anyways... I did, and now I'm paying the consequences, and and I'll get over it. Um, but anyway, so I did, unfortunately, because I wasn't feeling that great, I did kind of a lot of sitting around the last couple of days. Um, didn't really have a lot of energy to cook. I did attempt to make a soup, and it actually turned out pretty decent. I used, I made um, ground beef and lamb into little tiny meatballs, kind of like you know, the Italian wedding, wedding soup. And I made this recipe for uh, carnivore noodles, but I tweaked it to make it low histamine. So it asks, it, it wants, uh, calls for six egg whites. So instead I put six egg yolks and then added water to make it the same volume as the egg whites, just kind of eyeballed it. And then you add like a quarter teaspoon of salt and two and a quarter tablespoons of beef gelatin. Um, so I did that, whizzed it up in my magic bullet and then you um, put like clarified butter, butter to kind of grease up a, a pan and then spread it out, cook it like 300 degrees for I think 10 minutes then let it cool completely and then you can kind of cut it and peel it off into little strips I, I tried to to roll it which I kind of was able to do it kind of stuck around the edges but I tried to roll it and then slice it so I did that so I'll, I actually ended up with pseudo noodles they were not too bad for the first attempt my husband liked them um, but yeah, so we ended up having some soup and it was with beef stock and, you know, anyways, it turned out pretty good. But other than that, I was not really cooking and kind of depended on my husband and he's the egg man. So he made eggs. So I actually found some um, digestive histamine digestive enzyme, which has the diamine oxidase in it, 
which helps to di digest histamine. So I just took that and I actually did okay with the eggs. Um, but I do try to avoid eggs because the whites are higher in histamine. But um, when you're not feeling good, you do what you can. Okay, so let's take a look at today. Excuse me, I'm apparently not ready here. So let me get myself ready. Uh, okay, wow, am I not ready? Where's my little notes here? There we go. Okay. My rosacea was worse too, but it looks like it's not too bad. But it's interesting because with the with the sore throat, my rosacea got really bad just in my cheeks and got these little pustules and they were really red and bumpy and inflamed. So I don't know if that's because I had an infection. I mean, when you have an infection, your mast cells are active. So um, it seems to be better. I mean, I just recently got out of the shower maybe 40 minutes ago and not too bad. So I think overall my rosacea is getting better. All right, on to the results. So even though I was sick, kind of sick, I guess, and I'm more inflamed, I still lost some weight. So the scale weight had weighed in at 306. And that is down 1.8 pounds from last week. So that's encouraging and good. When I look at my fat-free body weight, it is up by 0.4. Um, now, if you look at the breakdown, like the muscle mass is up 0.6. So I'm thinking that I probably lost some fluid somewhere along the way. I mean, I've been drinking a lot of water and going to the bathroom a lot. So I don't know. I, But about 0.2 pounds of something that was not muscle and bone was lost. The only other thing I think can think it would be would be fluid. So anyways, um, so, but if I look at the fat free body weight, um, gain of 0.4 and I add that to my scale loss of 1.8, then my total fat loss for the week is 2.2 pounds, which is still fantastic. Really great. Um, very happy with that. One thing that I'm super happy with is my visceral fat went down. It had been hovering at 27 for several weeks now, and it is 26. And I have a long way to go before it's still high. The My little um, scale, the app on my phone, when I tap on visceral fat, it'll give me like a scale, like... Um, where it has like the colors, like green, yellow, and red, and I'm in the red. I think there's an orange too, but red is high. So I am in the red. In order to get to an acceptable range, which isn't ideal, but acceptable, I think it has to get down to like 15 or 16. I think it's 15. Um, so I have a long way to go, considering that it takes several weeks of hovering at one spot before it even goes down by one. Um, but I am going to celebrate every time that visceral fat number goes down because that is one less pound of fat around my organs, which is only going to help my organs function better and my body to function better. Um, so my muscle mass went up 0.6. <sighs> I decided to put an emoji to show how I feel about that metabolic age that does not want to budge off of 62 because I talk about this every single time. I am 55, I'm not 62, but my scale thinks I'm 62. It will not budge. Again, that's the only number that has not budged since I started doing this. And I'm just, uh, it just drives me crazy. Like, I don't want my metabolic age to be 62. At this point, I take, I take it going down one. I just wanted to start going down. I want to see some movement, not up, but I want to see some movement down. And everything else is coming in line with where it should be. So it's only a matter of time before that number starts to budge. But it's... Didn't do it this week. Um, 
Let me see. I think that that's it as far as the numbers go. Um, so happy with it. It was kind of, you know, one of these days where because I'd been sick and I hadn't been necessarily, I probably hadn't been eating the same type of food that I usually eat because I usually eat a lot of beef and fat and um, ate eggs instead. And um, I, I wasn't sure what to expect, and especially since I'm having the hip inflammation. Um, I didn't know what to expect. But again, it just seems like with the carnivore diet, if you know, as long as I'm sticking with zero carb, which I am, it doesn't, it seems to, the, the weight still comes off. Um, so overall, as far as how I'm feeling, forget the fact that I had that little cold. Um, generally I've been feeling better and feeling like I want to get out and exercise. Now it's raining right now. I mean, this is Pacific Northwest. We're going into fall and um, I think it's actually officially fall now. So we have some rainy days. It's supposed to rain all week and not supposed to have any more sunshine until Saturday, but it doesn't mean it rains all day long. Like we'll look, you'll look at our forecast and it'll have rain like every day, but it'll be, it may rain for like an hour or two and then it late, it lets up and we may get some sunshine here. And so it's not like it's raining 24 seven. We don't have that happen very often. Usually it's just kind of a little bit here and there. Um, but anyways, I have not been, I didn't go out, you know, I didn't go out and take a walk over the weekend because I just wasn't feeling well enough. And I just felt like I needed to conserve my energy. So I'm going to have to figure out like the best way for me to exercise while I'm dealing with the rain. Eh, maybe I'll just go out in it. Honestly, I up here in Washington, people go out and they exercise in the rain all the time. Like, and nobody uses umbrellas. And in fact, that's a funny thing. Like if you live in the state of Washington, one of the things you'll say is we know how to identify tourists because the tourists are using umbrellas and the people who live here don't use umbrellas. Um, we just don't. I mean, I moved here from California back in 2013 and I learned that pretty quick. And I learned that as long as you've got a hooded jacket, you're fine. And um, a lot of people go out and they exercise and they walk their dogs and they do everything in the rain because otherwise you know, during some seasons, you don't have a whole lot of opportunity otherwise because it's raining a lot. Um, so anyways, maybe I'll just go out and walk in the rain. The only thing I need is a really like long brimmed hat because the rain gets all over my glasses and then I can't see very well. Um, anyways, I think that's pretty good. Oh, Dave, it's interesting. I looked at our, like his, he weighed in today too. It's always, and if you're a woman, you can relate to this. It's always really sad to weigh more than your husband and he's looking thin I'm gonna have to get him and see either take some pictures or get him on here but he's actually starting to really lean out um but I am um, he started at 228 and he weighed in this morning at 206 so he's lost 22 pounds and I weighed in at 306 so I'm a hundred pounds heavier than he is, which is really depressing, but the gap was bigger. My, I, I don't know if I will ever get down to be lower than him. It would be nice because I'm, I'm five, eight and he's six, two. And theoretically I should be able to get lower than him. Um, and I have been lower than him like early on when we were dating, I, I weighed less than him. I know it's possible, but anyways, I just, I just, it was interesting because today I saw that that was an actually like, I'm at 306.0, he's at 206.0. And so it's like, wow, a hundred pounds. But again, it was more. So I'm actually losing weight faster than he is, which is really interesting because technically usually women lose, fat, lose weight slower than men. Um, but I have a lot more to lose. So maybe my body's got this momentum going. Um, but anyways, I'm just going to enjoy watching that gap between our weights getting smaller and smaller. And hopefully it will continue to do so. His weight will really just kind of settle where it wants to be, which is probably close to where he is now. Um, he just needs to start working out a little more, building up a little muscle. But uh, otherwise, yeah, he's looking pretty lean. So I'll get him on here sometime soon and 
maybe we'll take some more measurements shortly. That's it for today. And I hope everybody's having an absolutely wonderful day and um, has a fantastic week. Bye-bye.